every year, every goddamn year, there's this problem involving floor functions that doesn't seem like an integration problem at all. And I cannot believe that the contestants got every integral wrong except for this one, and they solved it within the time frame. I, I am still in shock. Okay, so I'm going to show you my solution development and can someone please comment a much better solution development a much more efficient one but this is my thought process on it first let's understand the problem we're interested in integrating from zero to one the maximum for every non-negative integer n of one by two to the n times floor two to the n times x minus floor two to the n x minus a quarter so here's what we're thinking. Let's first take apart this assortment of floor functions and define it as a function f sub n of x. So we have floor 2 to the n times x, terribly sorry about that, minus floor 2 to the n times x minus a quarter. Now because the difference between the arguments of the two floor functions is less than 1, the difference of the floor functions themselves is either going to be 1 or 0. So that means the maximum value of 1 by 2 to the n times the function f sub n equals 1 by 2 to the n. Okay, cool. That seems fairly simple, but we're interested in not just the numerical value of this maximum, but how many times it occurs for each integer. Because remember, we don't have one value of x, we have x belonging to the interval between 0 and 1. So we can have multiple instances for various values of x in different intervals. Let me show you how we're going to work around that. We're going to basically analyze the function f sub n of x for each integer. Starting at n equal to 0, we have f sub 0 of x, that sounds cool, f sub 0 equal to floor x minus x minus a quarter in the floor function, of course. Now, for x between 1 and 0, the floor function is always going to return 0. But the second floor function here, floor of x minus a quarter, gives us some hope. If I have x minus a quarter being negative, then the floor function will yield negative 1, and the two negative signs will cancel out, and I get positive 1. So for this function to be equal to 1, we need x minus a quarter to be less than 0, implying that x is less than a quarter. So the function is at maximum value for x belonging to the interval 0 to 1 quarter. And the value of that maximum is 1 by 2 to the 0, which is, of course, 1. Now for n equals 1, the case gets more interesting. We're now interested in f sub 1 of x, and that equals floor 2x minus floor 2x minus a quarter. And we're interested in this function being equal to 1, which yields a max value for the integrand being 1 by 2 to the 1, which is of course 1 half. But where exactly do we get the function f sub 1 equal to 1? Well, one option is the first floor function returning 0 and the second floor function returning negative 1. And that would be possible if 2x minus a quarter is less than 0. So we're analyzing the case of 0, which gives us x less than 1 by 8. So x could belong to the interval between 0 and 1, 8. But again, the maximum value of the function is 1 half over here. The integrand, I'll talk about the integrand. And... Another option would be 2x being greater than 1, so the floor 2x would return 1, and floor and 2x minus a quarter being less than 1, so the floor function would return 0, and again the difference would be 1. Okay, now for that to happen, we need x to be greater than 1 half, and for the second inequality, we need x equal uh, x less than 5 eighths, right? So for x belonging to the interval between 1 half and 5 eighths, we have f sub 1 of x equal to 1. So there are two intervals here of length, terribly sorry about that, 
The length of each interval here is 1 by 8. In the previous case, for the n equals 0 case, it was a quarter. There are two intervals, but something to take note of. For x belonging to the interval between 0 to 1, 8, this interval is a subset of the interval 0 to a quarter. And for x in this interval, we saw that there was a max value equal to 1 for n equal to 0. Whereas here, we would have a max value for the case of n equal to 1. That is, for n equal to 1, the max value is 1 half. So clearly, this interval should not be counted. Why shouldn't it be counted? Because the maximum value here is actually 1, and that exists for n equals 0, not 1 half for the case of n equal to 1. So despite there being two intervals for the case of n equal to 1, only one will be counted, and it has a length of 1 eighth, and it lies between, the interval is between 1 half and 5 eighths. Now the case gets even more complicated when we let n equal to 2, because now we're interested in the function f sub 2 of x, which equals floor 4x minus floor 4x minus a quarter. And in this case, we're interested in the floor functions returning 0, 1, 2, and 3. We can't have the floor function returning 4 because 4x is always going to be less than 4 for x less than 1. Okay, so that means there are four possible intervals over here. And the length here would be, once again, terribly sorry, the length of each interval here would be 1 by 16. But again, some of them aren't supposed to be counted. You can solve for the intervals yourself. I'm going to write them down here. We have x belonging to the intervals 0 to 1 by 16. Then we have another interval from a quarter to 5 sixteenths. Then we have another starting at 1 half, if I remember correctly. And it should be of length 1 16th, right? So that's 9 sixteenths. Then we have another. Let me give myself some writing space. It should be 3 sixteenths ahead. So that would be 3 quarters now, finally. And the length is 1 16th. So I'm going to have 13 by 16. So these are the four possible intervals. And of course, two of them don't count. I'm talking about this interval here, where the maximum value would be 1, and this interval here, where the maximum value would be 1 half, whereas for all of these intervals, the maximum value here of the integrand is 1 by uh, 4. Yeah, it's a quarter. And I ran this through up to n equal to 5, so yeah, that was quite a bit of work, and now I'm going to give you a bit of a visual of how these intervals are being counted. I'm no three blue, one brown, so I'm just going to draw these roughly and then show you a picture of what's going on. I invite three blue, one brown to make a video on this integral and show a beautiful visualization of this problem. And I also invite him, as well as every one of you, to like, subscribe, and share the video. Yeah, I know, not the most artistic representation, but it's the best I could do. Anyway, so n equal to 0, we have this box over here that I'm shading as a way to indicate that, yes, we are counting it, but I could have done that a bit better. Uh, yeah. Slightly better. So this box represents the function having a maximum value of 1, and the length of this box, or the interval, is 1 quarter. The reason I'm interested in lengths over here is because we're integrating from 0 to 1 maximum values for x in certain intervals, which are, of course, constants, and you can take them outside the integral, meaning that we're only interested in the length of the integral from, in the length of the interval from a to b. That's what the integral will sort out to. Okay, and now for n equal to 1, we see that this interval over here overlaps with the interval above, so we're not interested in it, we're not going to include it, we're going to color this box. So this is where the function has a max of 1 half, and the length of the interval is 1 by 8. Now for n equal to 2, we're going to have to disregard the first box, and this third box as well, but we'll count the fourth box. So we have one box here, 
one box here, two boxes here, and for n equal to three, we have one, two, and the eighth box is outside the scope of this slide. It's at least something that we can count. So this is three. And if you work this out for a higher values of n, like I did, you get this pattern. We have one box, one box, two boxes, three boxes, five boxes, eight boxes. Ring a bell? Fibonacci. And that's quite a pleasant surprise. It's the first time that Fibonacci Boy has popped up on the channel. So thank you, MIT Integration B, for including this problem. Now for the integral, we have i now being the sum of integrals, so we now have this sum over the non-negative integers k, of what exactly was the maximum value of the function that was 1 by 2 to the k, right? And this maximum value occurs f sub k plus 1 times, where f sub k plus 1 represents the Fibonacci numbers, and the length of each interval that corresponds to the value of the integral of dx over that interval. So that would be a quarter times 1 by 2 to the k, right? Okay, so that means we're interested in the sum over the non-negative integers k of f sub k plus 1 times we have a quarter times 1 by 2 to the 2k because of the 2, 2 to the 2k's, that's 1 by 4 to the k. In other words, we're interested in the sum over the non-negative integers k of f sub k plus 1 divided by 4 to the k plus 1. Now the Fibonacci numbers are characterized by the equation f sub n equal to 1 by root 5 times the golden ratio phi to the n minus the sort of conjugate to the golden ratio phi bar to the n. So this means that i equals the sum over k 1 by root 5 times the sum over k, that is, of phi to the k plus 1 divided by 4 to the k plus 1, which of course could be written as phi by 4 times phi to the k divided, or phi by 4 to the k, in fact, minus phi bar by 4 times phi bar by 4 to the k. So now we have a couple of nice geometric series. So we can write this as 1 by root 5 times, what exactly would we get for the first series? We have 5 by 4 divided by 1 minus 5 by 4 again. So that's 5 divided by 4 minus 5 minus 5 bar divided by 4 minus 5 bar. Then we get 1 by root 5 times 4 minus 5 bar times phi minus phi bar times now 4 minus phi. Everything is looking pretty good so far. So now to expand everything, we have 1 by root 5, 4 phi minus 4 phi bar minus 4 phi bar plus phi, wait a second, that would be phi times phi bar, and then we have phi bar phi. So some nice cancellation. 4 minus phi times 4 minus phi bar, 1 by root 5, we're left with 4 here, phi minus phi bar divided by 4 minus phi times 4 minus phi bar. Now phi of course equals 1 plus root 5 by 2 and phi bar equals 1 minus root 5 by 2. So plugging in these values and simplifying everything, you'll finally get i equal to 4 by root 5 times root 5 by 11. So after some cancellation, you're left with 4 by 11. Wow. That was amazing the entire integration b. I really liked the problems this time, and comment down below if you want a separate video of me covering the problems in the tiebreaker round for the final. That were pretty interesting as well, but I liked the main finals problems a lot more. I thought these were extremely cool. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.